I'm recording. Good. Go ahead. Oh, well, okay. So the prompt. So hi. Hey, um, everybody. Hey, everybody. Mid-thought. <laughs> this podcast should be called Midstream. Mid Mid that's right. Midstream. Midstream. Tangents. That's, that's the name and, of the new podcast, Midstream. Right. Tangents and Midstream Thoughts. So <laughs> the, the question that came to the table was, hmm. are we more likely to die at the hands of AI, global warming, or some idiot with a car that's going to run us over? Um, well, truthfully, Chris had just sent me an article or a video from yeah. some Google. Mo, it was Mo Gadot, who was the, the chief business officer for Google X. So, you know, all the all of their R&D projects, their fancy secret projects they're working on. And, and Mo Gadot was like, you know, has been beating the drum for a year about or more. Maybe I think 2018, he even started having these thoughts of like AI, his concern about AI. And his concern was not. And it, it, he he'll he'll talk about it as an existential concern, like we're gonna die, but not because of the machines. His point is, it's like it's not the machines; it's the it's the people who are interacting with the machines, telling the machines what to do. So if you have a um, a militant AI, because that's how it was programmed or or designed, coded from the the person, mm -hmm. uh, then you're gonna need other other cultures and societies to have their AI because it's going to be AI versus AI. It's not humans are, we're like, we're toast. We're out of the picture. I, dude, I could just keep going. Cause it's so interesting, right. but you should probably intersect. In, okay. Fine. Well, okay. So first of all, I refuse to watch the video because it was, <laughs> he did frame it as an existential crisis. And yeah. the truth is in my view, first of all, I'm not, I, I am actively managing what my mental diet of Good. what goes yeah. into my eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Uh, to whatever extent I am, because I'm really truthfully, I'm deep down the Trump espionage rabbit hole, which is really not any more or less valuable in terms of a vibration. <laughs> uh -huh, other yeah. than I get a whole bunch of schadenfreude, and I don't know where schadenfreude falls on the vibrational uh -huh. scale, but I've got a shit ton of schadenfreude <laughs> out of that. Um, uh, but the point is, I don't, I was like, I'm not watching that because I don't really care how the world's going to end. I don't, it's going to end by that or it'll end by something else and drone warfare and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Who the fuck knows? So, uh, but then Chris was pointing to something that I thought was worth hitting record for, which was, that's why we do this work. Um, huh. And why don't you talk about that, Chris? Why don't you, you know, just riff yeah. on that, what this well, is that people can get connected to if you're listening to this podcast. There's work that we could be doing that's not going to fight the AI, but mm -hmm. it's it's important that we're raising that vibration. We're raising these conversations so that right. something else is possible. And then that's, I think that's where you were going, yeah. Chris. Why don't you just flush that yeah. out? Yeah. Well, it's it's easy to relate to um, life's work, you know, um, esoteric work, work that feels like it's not how do I put, you know, uh, pay my bills and sell another house. Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, there's that, that stuff feels urgent, you know, like I got to pay bills. I got to make money. We're going to like, that is where most of our energy lives in terms of moving ourselves forward with working and, and things like the end of the world or AI or um, finding your true North and building a cathedral to serve and honor that true mm -hmm. North. Like that, that feels like <laughs> to use your word that could feel douchey, that could feel um, unimportant or how do I don't know how to access that? Like who talks about this kind of stuff? Right. And when I watched that video with that interview with Moga dot on AI, I just was like, Oh shit. Like this is what, it, if the concern, his concern is the humans program, the AI or giving the, 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 the agenda to the AI. I was like, I can see how this work of community, this work of walking each other home, this work of, of finding true north and creating structure around what we want to do to make the world a better place. I can see why that matters because it's it's us having more conscious conversations that lead us to a place of compassion, understanding, so that, and I think there's a silent majority who are afraid that these conversations are douchey. So we don't yeah. have them. Well, so what we do is we stay in the the the, the gravitational the pull of GCI. Right. Yeah, let's just distinguish douchey for a second because it's worth <laughs> yeah. right because that probably doesn't speak to everyone the right. way it does for us or the way it did for me and 
got you enrolled in it. So the, I like it. I mean, I like it, but like, I, it's good. But the, the so I was it. Anything that uh, uh, involves um, stepping outside the norm of the conversation, in this case, GCI, like that, if you're going to start talking about, if you're really going to start talking about operating a business from love, which is really distinct from sending people gratitude cards and door knocking on Valentine's Day with chocolates, which is sort of how love gets, you know, it's like, okay, in June, (laughs) my favorite Pride Month thing was Lockheed Martin's Pride display. Is like, yes, that's that's where we're at, people. Lockheed Martin was <laughs> making the bombs, and but Pride people, uh-huh. you know, like yes. just everyone hops on that bandwagon, right? right, right. Um, mm-hmm. We don't really mean that. That's not. I mean, great that Lockheed Martin is celebrating, and I don't. It's not like they shouldn't, but. Um, but to actually operate from heart, you know, op, you know, um, you know, Chris asked me how I, what I was doing, how, what, what am I present to today? And I, you know, got back from a tantric week long retreat. And since then I've been in the presence of the, I've been in the presence of where God is present in everything and all things. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, in everything. And that for me to talk about it publicly, mm-hmm. you know, is brings up whatever trauma I've had as a young man, as a child, as a boy in this culture about talking about things from the heart. Mm-hmm. Our young men, our boys are taught that that's yep. not okay. It's not okay to cry. It's not okay to have feelings, man up, you know, be yep. a man. All that whole culture mm-hmm. is endemic. And, 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 you know, and so for me as an adult, theoretically um you know talking about that feels somewhat douchey like okay well you know here we go i'm gonna be a hippie long at you know whatever you know tantric even saying the word tantric winds up being go, pushes me down that road scrap you know uh, uh presses on those wounds those trauma wounds yeah, of yeah. even saying trauma wounds is all in this domain of you know outside the domain of G- what does that have to do with GCI? What does that have to do with my business? Well, frankly, nothing unless you're creating your life as an expression mm. of something that makes that kind of difference. And that I think Chris is what you're pointing to. So when we say douchey, we mean like, okay, is it embarrassing to you to talk about it publicly when we talked about coming out of the closet as someone mm-hmm. who's woo woo, you know, yep, whenever yep, that yep. was eight months right, ago, right. Um, yeah. that's all wrapped up in that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Well said. Yeah. Yeah, well said. I think the uh, there's something about urgency, <laughs> existential threat. There's something about like, you know, in this interview, Mo Gadot saying like, you know, next couple years, like next couple. He he said, he said, I think it was something to the effect of the the IQ of the of AI right now is like. 176. I, I don't know. I don't know IQ numbers very well. But his point was like basically IQ is smarter than the majority of humans right now. Mm-hmm. And based on the pace it's learning, it's going to be smarter than humans in a couple of years. And once it's smarter than humans, he starts going into these different scenarios of what could like what it could go this way or it could go this way. Like AI might just disregard humans altogether because we're boring to AI and they want to just, you know, off they go to some black hole to find something else out there or, or they see us as a, you know, total um, obstacle to the smarter way to do something. And we become like the insect that is who cares if I step on the insect or not, it doesn't matter because we know we're the lower life form in the in the sense of intelligence right like right it just well, doesn't I, even I matter just, uh, okay so i mean without getting okay we could have the whole ai argument and i have no doubt that it's just a frame for the conversation. i got it but you but you uh, you keep mo what's his name mo I, I, all, I, all, I, all i hear is gal gadot because that's I, you could just say sorry, mo. i just I, mo. you know you get close to her name and i'm like oh my god okay um beautiful jew that never had like that like look at her um but um uh but what so i have no doubt that he's smarter than i am and has done way clearly way more thinking i mean stupid to even say it right he's done all that thinking but 
I just don't know where consciousness falls into that. Like the thing can be smarter than me, but what's the, how does intelligence relate to consciousness as a thing? Like to that it's intelligent. Does that infer that it has free will and the will to produce a result without being programmed to do it? Is that intelligence? I mean, if it is, that's one thing, but it doesn't, that seems to me to need consciousness. Will needs to be, come from somewhere the idea that it needs to produce and that's what i think he's saying is that what's this thing programmed to do a human being with will programmed it to do something and now it's going to figure out the way to do it yeah but this is i mean this is a great conversation because most of us because until i started listening to this like most of us have no fucking clue what's happening so AI is programming AI. Like it started with a human programming AI, but now it's programming itself. Okay. It's giving it's it's giving the 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 direction. It's saying, okay, based on the initial um prompt or whatever I'm trying yeah, to do, prompt. objective, I'm now going to code myself to better fulfill on what I was programmed to do. And there was a uh, an example of a. A hide and seek game that it was put into play and it's played this hide and seek game a million times and it was given an original constraint but it figured out ways to override those constraints by making new rules to the game so that it could uh, reach the objective which to me is crazy because how i hear that is if the objective is uh, you know whatever it is and it finds new ways to do it like literally it could shut down and what happens if the internet gets shut down it could do that. It could do that. And you can't just unplug it, you know, to everybody's point, like you can't just unplug it because you unplug it and we've built a world. I mean, maybe to my point, what I wanted to say to you was, as you were saying, that was like, we don't think about this stuff and um, we think we can just unplug it, but, but we've built a whole society. There's a gravitational pull to how we've built our world on technology. So you, you kill technology and now we're back. How, how far back in, in time do we need to go to rebuild our society? Because we decided if we turn the, if we turn the computer back on, AI gets waken, we get woken up and now we're back to the, to war games. We're back. To, <laughs> we're back to Okay. I mean, you know, look, I mean, then that, see, as soon as it gets existential for me, as soon as it gets like into actually our, our existence, uh -huh. I've just become, uh, if that's how we go, that's how we go. I mean, you know, it, that kind of shit just occurs is completely out of my, you know, might as well be a sun flare. Might as well be like worrying about an asteroid, you know, or uh, there's just it's so it's we're going to go. There's no I mean, from my perspective, there's no doubt that human beings have been, you know, uh, to whatever extent, if you look at it from the Earth's perspective. Yeah. Right. I mean, for the half a second not even a millisecond that human beings have been on the planet compared to the age of the planet. Yeah. Literally like, you know, you've seen those things, right. Uh, take a life of a planet to a year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If it was, if the planet, if the earth was a year old, human beings would be like the last half a second. Yeah. In the entire right. history of the earth. Right. right. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, to whatever degree we are an experiment from the earth's perspective, <clears throat> Okay, we're you know I don't even know that we're a failed experiment. We just this is what we did. This is so, so great because this is how I think people relate to conversations of true north and you know life's work. Like it just occurs as a I, we could talk about my life's work, we could talk about my true north, but what does it matter? What does it really okay. matter? I mean, if you get to a place that you're so nihilistic about. It doesn't matter. We're all going to go up in a solar flare or a nuclear war or AI is going to kill us. Well, or I don't think, no, see, I don't think it's nihilistic for me. I, I don't, be, I, this is my, I don't think it's nihilistic. I, I, because from my perspective, it's the opposite given, you know, you never know when it's going to end. And it's a complete illusion that you think you're going to be here at 11 a.m. Sure, yeah. uh -huh. It's a complete fantasy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That we think anything is going to be here at 1030 this morning and it's 1021 right now. And it is 100% fan fantasy mm -hmm. that we think 1030 is coming, which we could stop right there because nobody lives that way. Oh, uh, yeah. I've booked plane tickets because I don't live that way. So, we, yeah. but 
in the the but that's why people get so upset when reality smacks them in the face because life is completely uncertain so given that nature of it being uncertain i don't think it's nihilistic to say we don't know when it's going to end or how it's going to end or how i'm going to end and so given we have no idea then why wouldn't i deal with my true north only why would i not take every moment of this life given i only have this now this second now this second now to have it be an expression of something that inspires me now yeah i think it's the complete opposite now i i think it in terms of people like mm-hmm. i think the vast majority of people do so little self work so little self awareness work to even give any thought to whether it's an option or not uh-huh. to be it, not only they're not thinking about ai destroying the the planet or global yep. warming or whatever. Yep. They're not only not yep. thinking about that, they're also not thinking about their life's work. They're large percentage of planet is just figuring out how to drink clean water. Yeah. Right. And then there's the population, then there's the population that, that have the resources available to do some self-awareness work. Yeah. To bring some consciousness to it. And that's the very small slice of reality that you and I are talking to that are we're engaged in and our community and our friends and our family and out to expand that right because i think to your point initially when i said hit record was look if we, if we're you know if we're gonna give given we are the ones giving the machines the prompts and whether it's ai or not we're the ones who give our cars the prompts we're the ones who give all machines the prompts i mean we're all you know Yep. We might we might as well push towards having there be a rise in consciousness around what prompts we're giving people. From are we going to give people prompts from kindness, from love, from community, from a difference making, right? right? Or are we going to give them prompts to squeeze the most GCI out of everything, right? And right. I think that's why we do the work that we do. Yeah, and that's my and that is my point right. that that there is a. Yeah, Mo Mo goes on in the thing. He's like, you know, I I don't know if he said it this way, but how I took it was, if we could relate to the machines as, uh, and and only program the good stuff, only re- only interact with it as in through partnership, through collaboration, through love, through compassion, and that that what would be the the inputs coming into AI, what would be coming in is love and compassion. That right. that there would be a new way that we're relating. But if how we're relating is only ROI, do whatever you need to do, AI, to get me ahead of the other people so that I can be more competitive than somebody else. Now, what it's how it learns, what it's learning as a as an adolescent right now is right. oh, this is what this is how it goes. This is what how it means goes. to be human. What it means to be human is to get ahead, survive, right? Yeah. Good. Yeah, or, yeah, this, not good. what it means to be human, but you know yeah, yeah, what, right. their, what their job is. And but, that's yeah. Very much why we do what we do. Yeah. I love the idea that there is a, um, I mean, unless it came to a total halt and I just, I'm not really sure I see that happening, right? AI being shut down, paused. <clears throat> um, I think that cat is out of the bag, but I, uh, the idea that we could um, interact with one another from a place of love and compassion and and that it would actually matter that it actually matters to do that. Um, I mean, I think that's all of this is in service to that. And to turn a blind eye because it's it could be a solar flare, it could be something to say it doesn't to, to not engage in the possibilities of it, or to or you, I, I feel like you and I are engaged in what we, what our self-expression for hum, a better humanity is. I think we're engaged in that. But to not look at the where the threats are to that um a, a, a doesn't frame it for those not in this space and uh, so those who are using ai that would be open to this conversation but just don't know it's there and then and then because we're not talking about we can't frame it for them that way then it misses the mark and they just keep pretending like it doesn't matter I don't know if what I just said made sense because it felt a little I, I just I, I I'm not following what the point I got what you said. I just don't know. Connect that to what we're 
say it say it again say say it in a different way because i can't quite get what the connection yeah. is or what the point what you want to think that there are, i think there are people who are um i think i think to your point in past conversations you have not met a person who in in your life that would not want to make an impact for people correct every every human wants to make an impact for people and yet how we show up to our businesses in real estate is often how do I get another lead? Yes. It's not often our actions and business plans are not often done in the context of impact. They're done in the context of GCI and selling another house. Following you, with you, with you. With you. And so then there's a, so there is this way it is called, I'm going to sell another house. There's a way it is gravitational pull of GCI. And if we don't get related to the existential threat, We'll just keep living for the next house to sell. All right, so hang on right there. So hang on. Right there is where I lose you. So if we don't get connected to the existential threat of what? I don't really care. I mean, it, whatever brings you urgency to step out of your okay. rat race. Okay, good. So when you say get, existential threat, you, what you're saying is the same thing I'm saying with in terms of the life being uncertain that – it's all that your life is under an existential threat at every moment and you, you're not dealing with it. You're not dealing with it. And right. in this case, I'm using the example of AI because because that's what I was present to right. in the last week listening to that interview. I'm like, oh shit, right. this is okay. like happening now. Not This is not some sci-fi movie in the future. This is happening now. But for you, you listening to this, your existential threat could be something else, but we just don't get related to it because- it feels douchey or it feels confronting or it feels like, I don't know what to do or about it. Feels it feels nihilistic. I mean, like you said, it came out, it came for you like fatalistic, like what's the point, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. but that's, you know, you and I grew up real, in one way, grew up, you know, with life is empty and meaningless and it's empty and meaningless and it's empty and meaningless. That there right. is that to go down the road of because it's empty and meaningless, what's the point is to add meaning to it, <laughs> right? That's no longer the, you know, it's to say life's empty and meaningless is half the statement. It's empty and meaningless and it's empty and meaningless that it's empty and meaningless that it's yeah. you, it's a blank slate. You can do whatever you want it. And for you not to deal with every moment of your life yeah. is infused mm. with the opportunity to do anything you wanted. Right. And there is, and to, and forget about tomorrow's not guaranteed. The next breath is not guaranteed. Mm. And to live like it, anything less than that, is a missed opportunity. That's what you're saying, right? That's what you're saying is not dealing with the existential crisis. Correct. Yeah. Okay, good. Fine. We're on totally on the same page. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's right. And I think that's why we're, you know, God, I, I was dealing with, I spent literally, well, it's not quite. So I say literally, but it's not quite half my life, but it's mm -hmm. a year off or two years off of half my life leading introductions at this point. Wow. Is that crazy? That is crazy. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Hmm. Um, wow. and, uh, but it's why that's, that's the beating of that drum, you know, and that's the beating of this drum of this yeah. community is like, look, you know, I mean, now what feels douchey is okay. Well, we're just talking to realtors <laughs> <laughs> in the narrowest. <laughs> well, yeah, like I mean, that. maybe we should expand it, you know, uh, but, but, but either way, it doesn't, you know, it's fine. I mean, it's, we, we did pick this niche because both of us live it right i mean yeah. this is this is where we f have found each other um and uh mm -hmm. and then for the central role that we place in people's lives if we would to unleash our leadership in that particular way right that we are we've um to whatever degree we have we've um marginalized ourselves mm -hmm. right right we've allowed ourselves to be marginalized and um mm -hmm replaced to whatever degree and we and we only rail it's funny we only rail against getting replaced by bots uh you know whatever you know the the uh, uh what it prop tech yeah prop tech um property technology is oh right um uh we only rail against getting replaced by machines because it affects our gci <laughs> Not because it takes out of the equation someone whose life is touching another's life in a way that makes a profound difference in the 
assisting them in the sale of the most expensive thing they own, mm -hmm. most emotionally impactful thing they're ever going to buy. And we actually have a place in their community that if we nurtured that, we could have our voice make that difference that we're out to make. Yeah, and yeah. we've not even scratched the surface of what that even means. Hmm. And that's why we, you know, so for all that is what we came to this for. Yeah. And, uh, or came to this community for, and, you know, you could look at it like, you know, AI is going to replace us. You could look at it like AI is going to destroy us, or you could look at it like AI is going to do whatever it does. And I'm here to make a profound difference with the people who I talk, who I work with, and I'm going to have my life be reflective of what matters to me yeah. um, and see where it goes. And that's a, and and I think Chris, what you were saying earlier, and certainly I've lived this way. You know, we got to hurry up. Yeah, you know, we got work to do if we're going to unleash that, and we're going to be that kind of a force for people. And right, right, we got to do more than scratch that surface. You know, we we really got to do the work to crack that code. Yeah, that's good because that makes me think then too. Just <clears throat> that in part, the work. To me, the work is, um, oh God, and, uh, and the breakdown. The breakdown is, um, the work that's there to do is not found in a book. This, this work, this work, the next work is is a future that has yet to be decided. Like we're so busy trying to funnel hack each other's funnels and copy what each other's doing on listing presentations that we're not even engaging in the un in, in the questions that haven't even been asked yet. Well, look, AI can write my property descriptions and save me <laughs> all this extra time. And yeah. Then I can train my bots to respond on a text responder and even generate more business. And that's what are you talking about? AI. I mean, you know, I've made 30 social media posts in 30 minutes using AI. It was fantastic. Don't be dissing AI. I mean, that's really the depth at which we, you know, are engaged here in such a thing, right? Versus, uh, you know, I don't, if it poses an, I mean, we're only talking about AI today because you. I listened to that of, interview. Yeah, yeah. someone yeah. posed it as an existential threat to humanity. Um, so we're not even talking about the utility of it in its, you know, no. servant role as a, as a advanced word processor, which is essentially what, you know, as far as we've developed it in terms of our niche. Um, but yeah, there's no one, you know, we're, I would, I would love to use it as a, as a springboard yeah, to launch more people into giving a shit about what their purpose is and how they're going to contribute and how they're going to make a difference. And yeah, you know, That's what I'm saying that about it's the, 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 the work I feel like for us to do as humans is to begin to ask the questions we're not, we've not been asking and to yeah. wrestle with the mumble through what is out here. And I, and, and what I, I don't feel like the majority of us are doing that. I feel the majority of us are playing the game called how do I double my business? How do I funnel hack what works and doesn't work? Like we're so distracted by this game called how do I get an ROI that we're not asking the bigger questions about that would raise our compassion and elevate our humanity. We're not having those conversations. We're looking for the book that can give us the hack to how I catch up to where other successful people are. Or where I think other successful people are. Right. Really, <laughs> okay. Know. That's good. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. What, what it looks like other, you know, where's my Lambo buddy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. How do I get a Lambo? Exactly. That, yeah. That's what it looks like. Right. Um, yeah, and I. Yeah, I don't. I, I think that's a complete thought. I don't think there's anything else to say about that. You know, okay. Here's here. This is now. So for people watching, you know, this is now. You know, we're gonna. That's that whole thought. Hang on, I keep rubbing this because I've lost the zipper part and it's bugging me. And I really did this whole thing. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't lose the zipper part. It's only on one half. I now know how zippers work. Thing, I just figured it out. I'm like, God, did I lose it? Okay, fine. I'm back. Um, if we ever edited, we would edit that out. But of yeah. course, you got to just see that little mind dump. Because um, keep it real. All right. Well, Chris, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and this is now useful for implement, I think for people watching. I mean, that's that whole thought. You can go out and grok on, you know, 
that about your purpose and your relationship to your existence and what your difference you're going to make. But I wanted to talk to you, Chris. The other thing I wanted to bring up was, you know, we haven't really gone back and re-looked at how we're going to roll this out as a community, if we're yeah. going to use that program uh, or anything like that. So I don't know if we want to record this or not at this point, but it seems to me to be, it could be useful because look, that thing about that conversation about implementation of how you are going to leverage your leadership in your community as a realtor is something we haven't talked about. And I think, I know I personally have a, um, I much prefer to ideate than yeah. execute. Ideation, which really, you know, this podcast is fabulous for ideation, yeah. right? We, we have very interesting ideas, but execution is where you can, where you really do learn something, you know, about our failure in the last launch of the community, learned a ton out of that execution is but for execution to happen you've got to be willing to move beyond your limited interpretation of failure yeah your limiting in, in yeah interpretation of failure as a personal phenomenon versus a next step phenomena um so given we've just laid the case for why this community why what we're building exists yeah I think it might be useful for people to listen to us hash out, mumble through what we're going to do to implement it because there's no clear path for any of this. As to your point, there is no my book. Point. There's That's nothing to point. hack. That's my point. That's right. That's my so point. if you're still, if you, if you wanted to get through the ideation portion of the podcast, congratulations, you did. And now if you want to get into what it sounds like to mumble through uh, creating plans to execute, what do you think, Chris? Where, where did we leave that last time about starting that Facebook community. I think we got sort of stuck on the name, but I don't really remember. I mean, I think even before a name and is, uh, and, and all the, some of those things, it was just the, um, and I, I think we are on the same page about this, but the, but being on the same page, not just you and I being on the same page, but others being on the page we're on, which is this is simply about walking each other home in our purpose, in our true North, that, there is no playbook for your life's work. That's your life's work. Mm -hmm. I don't have the playbook for your life's work. Nobody has that. You have that. If And you would have to fail forward and mumble through your ideations and play with executing things that you think you're supposed to execute on to see what works and doesn't work about it. And well, that's that the purpose of the community was to do yeah. that in community, have the community up underneath each individual person so you could begin to hear whether, right? Yeah, We're yeah, totally and, it, that same it, and it doesn't work if how you come into it is thinking like, okay, I'm here to execute on the checklist right. you give me. Right, right, right. I, I don't right. have your checklist. No, what you have is a bunch of alliterated pillars, which are <laughs> gonna be- <laughs> you know, Sure, there's some frameworks and places to look. Right? All alliterated folks, every one of them. There's some places for you to explore, um, yeah. which I think is helpful when you're starting from scratch. You're like, shit, what do I mean? Where do I go? And to have some places to go is helpful. Yeah. Right. Um, like uh, I'll, you know, I think the ones, some of the ones we played with Aaron are like having, there's a, there is a message to your purpose. you you have a purpose and impact you want to make. And underneath that is a, is a message. There's a thing you can say to others that is related to your purpose. So for you, agency, people experiencing agency is a message mm -hmm. and all the tendrils of that message. For me, leaders leading, like I have all kinds of things I mean by mm -hmm. leaders leading, meaning I think a lot of leaders are not leading. I think people, you think listening to this, that someone else is the leader and I'm suggesting that you're the leader and you're not leading. And there are all the tendrils of that. So you see, like you could go play with that for a while and mm -hmm. execute on Say say that. Don't just say come to my open house. Right. Don't just say buy my program. Say the other stuff that's more aspirational and, and inspiring to people that calls people into a bigger version of themselves. Great. Yeah, totally. And that's the what what happens in the community as we engage and move yeah. up. And we, that's uh, I'm with you. I was speaking more to I know. Uh, 
Oh, you know what I was thinking. Okay, uh, yeah, go. I got I got off on a tangent, but I think it's related. And I can pull it back. But go. Okay, you, pull, you, no, 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 pull it back. No, I, 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 everything that you said, I'm a hundred percent behind you. Like this is exactly why we're doing this. That's what it looks like to participate in community. Yeah, it looks like getting all those things hashed out. Yeah, right. I, I'm. Yeah, you know, because I was. Good. I, I I just think that part of if the if the question is so how do you and I execute on this thing mm -hmm. part of it for me is you and I mumbling with the message of it. And that's, and this podcast is a great piece of that. This is a way for you and a mechanism for you and I to say the message, right? That's part of it. Good. Then another place for people to look, this is both a thing for you and I, and for others, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a teachable moment and it's a working session between you and I. Another piece of this framework is who are the right people for this? Cause not everybody's the right fit for the thing you want to say. Not everybody has ears to hear what you want to say. So I don't, I think maybe some, there's some work for you and I still to do about who is it for, you know, for you and I to wrestle through and mumble through who is this actually for? Yeah. Good. Because it would impact who we invite or it would impact the circles we're in or it, it would impact what we name the community. Like, to, to try to name it without knowing who it's for. That is dumb. You know, we might miss. Well, you don't know, you know, especially given, you know, naming something, especially something that you're out to have other people participate in needs to speak to their concerns. They need to be able to hear it. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we yeah. talk about this all right. the time, the difference between naming the book, the four hour work week and how to outsource your business to offshore VAs right. is a really different, result right 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 in terms of the sales of that book and you could have named the book either way and it would have been an accurate representation of the book um yeah i'm noticing too like that there might be maybe maybe i don't i'm not impatient for when this happens great hang on one second we got to put it actually pause the recording <laughs> okay, we're back we're back uh <laughs> without interruption to you listening Oh my gosh. Yes, that's right. You didn't need to hear all of that. The miracle of technology. Um, I, I think what I was saying was though, um, I'm not in a hurry to launch. Yeah. I'm not in a hurry to execute. But and AI I don't is know if, destroy us. You gotta hurry up, dude. We gotta hurry up. I know. I know. Isn't that a paradox? I, but I feel like um, and I don't know if that's in your space. I do think there is this thing that is culturally ar around us that is like a Hurry up, we gotta go. Hurry up, we gotta go. Hurry up, we gotta go. And I'm not in this work with you. I'm I don't have that. And I don't know if you have that. Like well, you're getting I have it from from I have a couple of different cuts on it than just that. Mm -hmm. One is hurry up, AI is gonna destroy us. I you know, uh -huh. I, you know that's not my main main concern, but just to right. say it that way, like yeah. you know hurry up. What are we waiting for? Like there is in fact work to be done with people. Yes. And so yeah, right. our slow, our, no, you know, there's that. Then there's the level at which I avoid execution anyway, yep. because it's confronting and failure and it takes action. And it's more than just sitting here for an hour a day or an hour a week with you. Yep. Um, so I want to have a breakthrough in that. And I hear the pitfall that you're pointing to from the force field perspective of, you know, hurry up and hurry up and grind, you know, like, let's go, you know, got to be producing. I do hear that as a pitfall. Yeah. Um, and I do think, you know, it's um, important. Uh, let's see. Interesting. Okay. Now let me just bring that. Um, that added the tantric attitude that we were like mm. we talked about last week, right? Yeah. Like um, uh, uh, giving up a goal orientation, mm. you mm -hmm. know, which mm. is let go of goal orientation. Mm. Um, Cause I do find that, you know, that's super easy to lean into. Um, mm -hmm. go. Let's go. Um, right. Right. Okay, good. But I do think there's, so, okay, so I hear what, so just from that perspective, you know, I think it, it's, you know, it, it's, in, I, 
we do have an end goal, right? You know, you have a thousand communities. You have, we do have the importance of creating a um, image of what you want the thing to look like when it's met, right? A future for it. Um, And if we are sensitive to when we're pushing just to push versus when we're up against a boundary and we want to expand ourselves to press, right? Um, Or when we're sinking away from a boundary so that we don't have to confront pressing. Right. um, And be sensitive to where those spaces are and how those feel. Right. I think, you know, moving forward makes sense. There's a, there's a, a dance. Yeah. Yeah, There's a dance happens there. Right. For sure. Okay, good. One of the hardest things for me was, um, well, three, three years ago, I did some hypnotherapy stuff and I, I feel like I've told you this, but the, I noticed that I had been using anger as the energy to cause me to show up and do the work, mm-hmm. like sit your ass down and get to work. Cause I'm a, I'm an ideation guy. I, I could, I like to go here and I'm like there and, and, um, anger for 20 years in business was the thing that said, sit your ass down and go to work. And I was tired of people looking at me as a dreamer. I was tired of people, um, relating to me. Like I don't follow through. And so anger was this helpful companion that said, sit your ass down and go to work. When I noticed that three years ago, I was like, I don't think I can go where I want to go with that energy. That energy to me is a lid on the work I want to do. Um, and I made a conscious decision just to take my hands off of anger, to be like, okay, I'm not going to do that. But the part, the problem with that was, was for the last three years, I was floating. Like there was no rudder. Mm -hmm. to my action, to my execution. It was like, maybe I will, maybe I won't, but I'm sure as hell not going to make myself sit down and do the work because I'm trying to explore something outside my old patterns of, Mm -hmm. I just saw your, I just saw your meme this morning that you posted Tuesday vibes about, you know, the internal dialogue that happens, you know, like, like that internal voice was the thing saying like, do the work. And it's very unnerving Mm -hmm. to Say, I'm not going to execute when everything inside you is like, you're behind, you're behind, you got to execute, you're behind. And I just want you to know that I'm not in a hurry. I mean, there's an existential threat. We might die tomorrow from AI, but, or a solar flare, (laughs) but, 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 but in the right work of things, I'm willing to be in a position or posture of surrender and presence and take the next right step. Because it's the next right step, not because I'm feeling impatient to execute. Great. Great. I love it. I love it. I do think it's, a, you know, we're a good check for each other like that. And it's one of the advantages of being in community. Again, yeah. you yeah. know, like why doing things with others gives you a sounding board, an opportunity, a reflection. Yeah. You know, to see yourself and how you are good, bad, and indifferent in others is a real opportunity. And I think it's a, I you, think you need, sorry. No, good. I think this, uh, you know, you are, um, we're having this alliteration conversation in this, in the Groundsville University community, right, with the flywheel. And that there, to me, community is the flywheel. Like it, it is the thing I could show up to every day and execute on. And you and I having these conversations and meeting weekly is me executing. Mm-hmm. It is you executing. And I believe that if we keep doing this, At some point, there will be three of us, then four of us, then 10 of us, then 20. Like, But this is the work. What you and I are doing is the work. And as we invite people into the conversation, I don't know that it's more complicated than that. I don't think it is either. I was just looking at, you know, the doorway into this conversation. Yeah. You know, creating the opening for people to participate. Because right now it's you stumble across the podcast and then you hound us until there's enough people to open right. the doors again, which is really a very narrow. Yeah. Uh, and we were, you know, I was looking at it like, okay, well, how are we going to open that up Yeah, to have a bigger conversation for more people? And then the point that you made, I thought was brilliant is, all right, well, we got to articulate, we don't have to, but the opportunity is to articulate who we're speaking to before we, right. the next step, the next step forward right. Right. is, who is this for? Yeah. Right. And because we're pretty clear, this is what it is. And we're both really satisfied with this. Yeah. Right. 
the conversation that the podcast represents and the pod, the opportunity that this would be right. to happen in community. And we keep refining that. And I think the other aspect that's calling to me, and I think to you is, you know, the aspect of the future that's calling us is that whatever gets developed between you and I on these shows is our starter seeds prompts for what could what will happen in community and we're both sort of excited to see what happens yeah, when you yeah. get 10 20 30 people mm -hmm. beginning to bounce around in this and there'll be way more things being developed we'll have more places yeah. to go yeah and that'll be exciting so i think yeah. there's that is that's a that's the next yeah thing in the future like i always tell anyone who I'm doing script practice with or any kind of script practice is all you can do is practice the next thing to say, because you don't know what they're going to say to the next thing. Right. Right. So if you have three things you're ready to say, you're fucked because you're now waiting for them to say the one thing that triggers the next one of the next two things you have to say. Yeah. <clears throat> so, but the next space is what opens up when there's more people engaged in this and, you know, working on that flywheel. Um, and then, it, and then I thought it was great that what our, our next work is who's this for, and that may be the prompt for next week is, all right, who who are we speaking to? Yeah, well, like that. But I, that's what I took away from what you said in terms. And so, it just to wrap this back to the execution yeah. side, yeah. it's yeah. also important that you um, time is the only limit. Time is really your only resource. And it's the one resource that you never get more of. You know, it's the one thing that you don't. So to use it um, efficiently, use it wisely, use it well is critical that, right. you know, right. over execution and over, you know, over commitment to multiple variables is as problematic as never executing as all. So to, for us to take the time to really go, okay, if we're going to open this and we're going to have people participate, figuring out who it is, what their concerns are. Yeah. Right. I, I, I do think that the um, there's another piece here that you and I are mumbling through and that's the process. So we've got the message, the people and the process. And I think you and I even, um, or I, you, there is the idea that there is, what do we do? What are we doing here? Like, is it just 90 minutes in conversation every week? Or is there a process that we, you and I can design as a framework to help people begin to show up every week with, with execution? Like what's the process of execution that honors the, the the consciousness and the bin binaural beats that <laughs> the, honors the 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 flow of things that points you down river so that it you're in flow with it versus um a process that feels like i don't have time to do one more thing you know like and i think and i've been wrestling with this in, in other communities that i'm partnering in like i want a project i want some tangible thing that we're all sort of doing together but in our own ways that allow us to make progress on the purpose mm -hmm. on the true North. And I, I have not mapped that out for myself. I think I'm experimenting with other people. And I think you and I, I think we've talked about this and that is like, for me, it might be a missing in the background, like beyond the talking of things, what else are we doing? Mm -hmm. What's the process we're inviting them into? Right. Especially yeah. for the people, if they're real estate agents who are, wired for or conditioned around action it makes a lot of sense to have a process that you and i are are like okay this is the process we're experimenting with let's go well i don't know what that is yet so right i mean there's a lot of different ways to lay that out yeah right and i do think it's uh, if we're gonna given everything happens in linear time for us yeah, yeah. um you know the next step would be to fully articulate the who yeah. And then the what, like you just said, you know, yeah. if the who is hardwired D personality right. agents, then that's going to give a different what than if we yeah. were, you know, doing this for hardwire C 
agents, but sure. you know, and, yeah. and we got to look to see because I'd be very hard pressed to think there's going to be a lot of C personality types in this conversation or S type, you know, yeah, this right. is not really for them. I, it's not, it, I don't think it would appeal the way it would to a, a D or an I or, right. And I had a whole bunch of people talking to me about Enneagrams recently, which I know nothing about, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, right, you know, right. like, but just narrowing down and, and articulating who the That's good who point. is will give us a closer view of what the what could be or yeah, what really good. makes sense. And then I think having those things makes the invitations, the, the execution I think you're referring to, which is yes. how do we grow it? How do we have people actually here? I mean, I think having clarity around those things makes the execution of invitation easier because now we know what we're inviting people into. And up to this point, it's really been like, well, I feel good having these conversations with you, but I don't know how to exactly explain to others what we're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the, um, the percent of people who are willing to hang in the uncertainty of mumbling is a small, small percent of people compared to people who are like, I'd come in if there was a track to run on. If you knew what you were inviting me into, there would be more people, a bigger percentage of people who would say, yeah, this sounds purpose. Yeah, I get purpose. I want to have purpose and impact. What's the track we're running on here, Aaron and Chris? We don't know. Okay, well, I'm out until you figure that out. Right. Yeah, I, do, I think both pieces, you know, and, and we'll see. I mean, it, it, let's get the who, and then the what's could be varied. I mean, there could be varied what's. There could be like, you know, there's a Facebook group yeah. for very low uh, 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 commitment. Yep. You know, that once a week they get some new piece of content that they can wrestle with and they can participate with on their own independently. Then there could be, there's certainly the True North workshop, yep. right? Yep. That yep. we have, that's another opportunity. And that's a funnel for a different ongoing program. Yeah. You know, that becomes like, okay, once you create True North and you're in a, it's how I've been envisioning it is that there's, you know, a very low commitment mm -hmm. way for people to orient themselves. Mm -hmm to what this is and they can, you know, self-serve. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the podcast right. or whatever other content we, you know, here's the weekly yeah. prompt. Yeah. Go for it. Right? right. Then there's all right, we're gonna work with you for an hour and a half and have you develop your true north. That's a whole separate yeah. thing. And then once you have your true north, if you're interested in the implementation of that, what it looks like to implement, then we've got the alliterated frameworks. <laughs> um yeah. that's how i have it in my mind that's good yeah you know i like, have this like, yeah i have this image of us as i'll just use the word pioneer because that's the word that's in my head like that you and i were like hey let's go check out like the north 40 like let's just go right. like let's go look around up there we're like hey dude this is awesome and then we went back we tried to we went back one time and we're like dude you guys gotta come up here to the north 40 and people were like they they went with us for a couple miles and like what the fuck are we doing exactly. we're like dude you don't see i mean and so it's like making that invitation to go explore just needs a little bit more like roadmap and yeah, and maybe there doesn't need to be a Denny's at the top, but maybe some <laughs> benches up top. There's some clear out some trees so that yeah. people can actually see and make the path yeah. just a little bit easier because maybe they're not interested yeah. in going through the bramble. So we're gonna right. we're gonna hack the trail just a little exactly. Bit. Um yeah, yeah totally. Good. That's I mean, that's every that's the mumble phase. That's exactly what we're doing. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. totally down with that. That's so funny. All right. Well, next week, let's have that be a prompt. We'll see if we can remember that prompt for next week. Um, what do you, what, what's the prompt? The who? Oh, okay. Got it. Let's, let's see sorry. if we can't fully flesh out uh, <clears throat> who we want to work with. So for people that are looking to execute whatever their leadership, their vision for their leadership is, they, you know, when always yeah. the hard, always the hardest part of being a new realtor has was for me and for a lot of people when I train them is what's your niche? Mm -hmm. Who are you going for? Right. Who's your customer avatar? Everyone, castles, you know, like Tom Ferry would say, condos to castles, right? Mountains yeah, to yeah. sea, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. and, except that's, you know, now you're, now you have nobody. That's nothing. You cannot do that, right? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, right. really going through picking out our avatars and, yeah. and looking to see, is it one? Is it two? Is it three? You know, who are the people that this would speak to? Yeah, it's good. You know, we've had a couple of people participate, so we do know that the initial um, cheese that we put out yeah. is attractive to some, you know, what are those people that have participated have yeah. in common? Yeah. And, right. right, 
Um, yeah. And let's see. I mean, the, yeah. they're all women is interesting. That is interesting. Hmm. What's the ratio of men to women in real estate? Do you know? I'm going to take a stab at 60, 40. It might be like 54, 56. I, it's somewhere in that. Okay. It's not more than, it's not 70, 30. You don't think so? And I think it's, I think it's weighted towards women over men, but. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, it, I thought it was interesting. You know, I mean, it's obviously too small of a sample size to get anything going on about, but um, yeah, you know, there's something about, but look, I mean, if you think about it from the, distinctions feminine masculine yeah right yeah uh uh the creativity the fumbling mumbling stumbling mm -hmm. you know willing to play with is really different than i got some place to get to mm -hmm. you know hard edge what's considered masculine energy that you know it does there is a a, a softness or a, 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 a you yeah. know source yeah yeah it's so. creation yeah cool okay well i think that's an episode i think so yeah and I, I i will just end if some somehow in the universe someone made it this far in this conversation <laughs> <laughs> and, and you wanted to learn more about uh this community that we're that we're talking about with this whole conversation is always about you can go to repurpose.group forward slash invite all right man right thanks aaron thanks